What you do? Uh, uh, oh, yep, yeah, there it is.
Heart health. Important stuff. With a high of 83. Only a 10% chance of a stray shower. We got about to go, go live in about 20 seconds. Tuesday and this is Facebook. Instagram, YouTube, YouTube, Twitch, Hi, YouTube and Twitch. Got a brand new camera, by the way, guys. Lucky you. 72 degrees on Peachtree Street at News 955 and AM 750 WSB. Depend on it. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad we could spend a little time together. Interesting show today. My father died of a heart attack, and I know a lot of you have had people die of, of, die of heart attacks in your life. And I want to talk today about what really causes hardening of the arteries. And that's one of the ways the heart can stop if it gets clogged up. And what really causes it? And you've heard about it, hardening the arteries, uh, plaque building up in the arteries. Why does it happen? That's the key. What I always try to do with all my shows is give you the why. We want to explain to you uh, logic. Because I just tell you, you have hardening the arteries. And, and as a chiropractor, we take x-rays on our patients often. And uh, twice a day, maybe, maybe three times a day, we find hardening of the arteries. That's how common it is. And it blows my mind. Because patients come in and I'll say, you have hardening of the aorta, hardening of the common iliac arteries. I didn't know that. My cardiologist never told me that. My internist never told me that. And I show it to my x-rays and they say, well, there it is. It's not a lie. And every now and then, several times a year, but not every day, we find one that's so bad, it's what's called a dissecting aortic aneurysm. And if it's over 5.5 centimeters or 55 millimeters, it's a surgical case. And sometimes we find them real close to that and we say, you need to go to your surgeon now. And they always say, but I feel great, doc, and I'm fine. I got an appointment in six months. No, 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 now you have to go. And I'll call their doctor and I'll say, listen, you got to get Bob in right away. We have a 5.5 dissecting aortic aneurysm. Oh, yes, get him on the phone. We need to get him in right away. And inevitably, their cardiologist, whoever says, well, how did you find that? Because we've been treating this person for years, but they never looked. They, they check the heart rate and they check the pulse and they uh, check the A1C and um, they'll, they'll, they'll check to see if there's, if there's uh, inflammation in the body. But they don't do a basic scan like an ultrasound or an x-ray. And so when they see it, then I have to talk to the patient and say, listen, this is what we have to do to reduce the placking. And we do that by reducing the inflammation. So what happens is, and, and the number one reason, uh, number one drug people come in to see us is blood pressure medication. Then diabetes and cholesterol is right up there. And we have a drug called a statin drug, and I'm not saying don't take your statin drugs, please understand that. If you're taking the statin drugs, the goal of the statin drugs is to stop your liver from producing cholesterol. The cholesterol in your blood is too high, so we wanna bring down the cholesterol. Makes sense, if we give you a pill that stops the production of it, that should lower your cholesterol, it usually works pretty well. Some of the problems that occur with that. The same enzyme, the same area of the liver, the enzymes that produce the cholesterol also produce something called coenzyme Q10. And CoQ10 is necessary because it gets into the cells, all the cells in your body, and makes the mitochondria, the, fuel, uh, the powerhouse of the cell, produce energy. So if you don't have enough CoQ10, the cell can't produce enough energy and you become weak, tired. And that's why a lot of patients on statin drugs come to us and say, Doc, I'm tired all the time, just wiped out. I, I sleep eight, 10 hours, I can't move. And then I'll tell them, listen, at least take a CoQ10 supplement. And they take that within a day or so, a few days, they start to feel better. But once again, that doesn't treat the cause, it treats the symptom. The symptom is the high cholesterol. Why do we have high cholesterol to begin with? Well, it could be that your body's producing too much cholesterol. And studies I've read, one in 100 people have that, genetic hypercholesteremia, they produce too much cholesterol. And those people probably do extremely well with statin drugs. And you can do dietary changes and everything else we're gonna talk about today. And it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. They have it, it's genetic, take the statin drugs, take the CoQ10 and that's, that's the game. But studies I've read, 99 out of 100 do well when we can help get to the cause of why the cholesterol is so high. And one of the reasons is, some of the new research coming out, is that the liver is not recycling the old cholesterol. You're producing it, but what's ever left over gets recycled back into the liver. And by cleaning up the liver, cleaning up your diet, and then getting the liver to function more efficiently, the body's able to recycle the cholesterol. 
pretty neat stuff. So let's talk about what happens during arteriosclerosis, heart and your arteries. Person eats a meal. You eat a meal. I eat a meal. If it has something in it called polyunsaturated fats, years ago we were taught those were good. Polyunsaturated fats are good for you. Well, new research is showing maybe not. The polyunsaturated fats, such as corn oil, soy oil, canola oil, they get oxidized very easily. What that means is they break down. They go rancid. And when they oxidize, the polyunsaturated are really unstable with that. We absorb them. They get into the blood system. They come in contact with what's called the endothelial cells, the lining of your blood vessels. How, how many blood vessels, how long do you think the blood vessels are in your body? 62,000 miles of blood vessels are in your body. So these oxidized rancid fats come in contact with the endothelial and they create an, uh, an irritation. They, they cause an inflammatory reaction. Now, the oils can oxidize outside the body, but they can also oxidize inside the body. They can go rancid inside the body. And they go rancid when they're exposed to something called free radicals. Now, free radicals are like Pac-Man. They eat through things. Waka, 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 waka. And they're eating through things. And if they interact with the polyunsaturated fats, they can oxidize them. And now we have a problem. Because when the oxidized fats irritate the lining of the artery walls, an inflammatory reaction occurs. And generally speaking, we're going to get a little more, in, more into detail in a little bit, is when it irritates the artery wall, there's an inflammatory reaction. So the body then lays down cholesterol, kind of like a scab. You cut yourself and then a scab forms as a coating over the wound to protect it. Well, cholesterol is laid down through a process that we'll talk about here in a little bit. And the cholesterol lays down, and if it's stable, it's no big deal. The plaque just, well, it is a big deal, because the plaque builds up enough, it can block off the artery. If it's unstable, a piece of that plaque can break off and now flow through the body and can clog up blood vessels. And if it clogs up the blood vessels to your heart, you have a heart attack. If it clogs up the blood vessels to your brain, you have a stroke. So we, so we go back, what's causing this inflammatory reaction? Why is the body laying down this cholesterol to begin with? It's many cases, oxidation. Oxidation of bad fats. So there's good fats and there's bad fats. And we'll talk about that too if we have time. So we're going to, I think we're going to go to break soon. Yes. Okay. Uh, so folks, we're going to go to break soon. If you have any questions, give us a call. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through the studio. So if you have a question, we'll get you on the air. Uh, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we're a chiropractic team. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We work on chiropractic issues, nutrition, digestive issues. Go to my website, drjoe.com. And you can make an appointment right online or give us a call when we're not on the air, 844-44-DR-JOE. Folks, got to go to break. Give us a call here at the studio with questions. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. We know how important the okay. news and traffic are. So hi, everyone out there in cyber world. Glad you could be here today. So if you have any questions, send them to us, okay, through your platform, whatever it is, Facebook, Instagram, Stitcher, uh, YouTube, and we'll answer the questions for you. What we do, if you're new to the show, what we do is we do the show because the radio show is nationally syndicated. It goes all over the world, internationally syndicated. It goes all over the world. But at break, what we're doing now is we're able to talk to you one on one and answer your specific questions. So it's kind of like a little breakout session between every show. And then at the breakout sessions, we have about three breaks an hour. We'll answer your specific questions. So if you have anything, send it to us right now. We'll go ahead and answer them. So well, the first question. Oh, we have questions. Day. I'm sorry. I was yapping there. Okay. No, for no, we only have a couple. Okay. People Come on, folks. Get it. on the ball here. Uh, first question of the day is your ginger tea recipe. Yes. How much ginger? How much lemon? I take organic ginger and I, I scrub it down. You don't have to peel it really. Just kind of wash it off. I, I use a scrub brush to clean it off. Put it in a food processor or a good blender. And I covered about one third with uh, lemon juice, organic lemon juice. Maybe a little more than one third, depending how thin you want to make it. Oh, this one, thank you. I got Garrett's got to tell me what, where I'm, who I'm speaking to. Um, and then I puree it. Now, when you puree it, puree it a lot because you got to break up the strings. Ginger is very stringy. So puree it until it has the consistency of pizza sauce, like a puree. And then I put it in an ice cube tray and I freeze it. And I'm doing this now because it's cold weather setting in. And when we freeze it, I take out one ice cube every morning, put it in a cup. Now, if you want to add honey to it, if you're that's that is an animal product. Uh, if you're going to use honey, make sure it's locally grown organic honey or locally harvested organic honey. I use stevia personally, 
and I have a cup of ginger tea every morning, and it's amazing. It warms the blood. It's an aphrodisiac, so be careful. Uh, but it's, it's anti-inflammatory, and it's just wonderful. And then if you want to cook something with ginger, if you want to do a stir-fry or something, you have these cubes of ginger that you can use as well. And it's on, is it on the website, the ginger recipe? Um, I think it's in the Dr. Joe blog. That's where I have my articles. Check there. If it's not there, if send us an email. it's not in the blog, it's definitely in the book. It's definitely in my book, yes. It's in one of these books. Uh, yeah, Eating Right for the Health of It. It's in that book. But if it's not there, send us an email. We'll get it posted for you. Because I know it used to be posted. Maybe it's, sometimes things disappear. All right. And the other question, um, it's all about drinks today. All right. Kombucha. <laughs> what do you think? It's great. Absolutely wonderful. And in fact, a friend of mine, um, she liked to drink, and it's, it's, she started realizing it was getting a little out of control. You know, mm -hmm. it starts out with just one drink a night, and then one drink on weekends, and then when I had a rough day, I had another drink. I'm not, and eventually, that's how we've become alcoholics. Um, if not even an alcoholic, it, it certainly becomes something you look forward to, you depend on it. And I'm not a fan of alcohol. I don't drink, and I don't think you should either. But kombucha ha is a fer fermentation process that creates a little bit of alcohol, but most of the kombucha, it's pasteurized, and the alcohol cooks off. The problem is the whole point of kombucha is to have probiotics, good bacteria in there in the fermentation process. And when you pasteurize them, I'm guessing they cook off too. So you can either make your own kombucha, which is at re relatively easy. You get something called a scoby, looks like a floppy mushroom, and you put tea in there and you just let it ferment in a day or two. And then you can add flavoring to it or make your own. Um, but a lot of people that I know have gotten away from drinking alcohol and they go to kombucha now because it gives that more adult fla beverage flavor. And it's a much better choice. But kombucha is fine. I have no problem with kombucha. Good stuff. They are popping up with uh, kombucha shops and oh, and kombucha tap on. Yeah, it's, it's all a over cool. town. Yeah. See, we were cool before it was cool. That's that's what's cool about this show. <laughs> the things we talk about um, will become mainstream. And in fact, I was talking to my boss the other day, Pete, and he says, "You know, Doc, Dr. Joe, he says some people might think you're full of crap. He says, but I think you got your crap together." He says, I listen to you. He says, I'm not only your boss, I'm a fan. He says, and I listen to you and I learn new stuff every day. And I feel that what you say is true, that the things you talked about 10 years ago are now mainstream. He said, the things you're talking about today will be mainstream in the next few years. And so he's very uh, uh, perceptive. He's the number one program director in the world at the number one radio station, WSB, in the world. So the guy's, uh, guy's pretty sharp. So he's telling us that what we're talking about is true. So oh, here we are. We won the Marconi Award. Number one radio station in the world, in the country anyway. Uh, and so it's an honor to be part of that and help put in a little tiny contribution to make us the number one station in the country, which is pretty cool. I think we're coming back soon here. Okay. Again, folks, if you have a question, send it to us, and Garrett will read it for me if we can get it online. If we can't get to you, because we have a lot of questions, obviously, send us um, an email with a question, and I'm more than happy to answer it for you. And upload vids on YouTube. I will get to you next. Okay. Okay. Got a question from Sarah on acid reflux. And you can always call in too, folks, by the way, 4444 Dr. Joe, if you want to hear your voice on radio. Here we go. Why didn't I listen to him sooner? Dr. Joe Esposito on News 95.5 at AM 750 WSB. Hey folks, Dr. Joe, so glad you're here. I do appreciate you taking time out of your day. Everybody's real busy. Uh, important topic today, talking about hardening the arteries, what causes it, what causes plaquing the form, and why does that eventually can break off and cause heart attacks and strokes. And a lot of it, in fact, almost all of it, this is the hard part, is self-induced. You did it to yourself. So why would you do something that you know has a very, very high likelihood of causing real serious damage and maybe even death? And the only reason I can think is that you don't know that. A famous guy once said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that's so true. Every day, patients tune into our website, drjoe.com, and we have well over 1,000 hours of podcast there, audio, video, and people watch, download our shows, listen to our shows, and now they know. But up to that point, they didn't know. So if you don't know, you don't know what to do about it. So we talked about bad fats and how those can oxidize polyunsaturated fats, and those are usually... Um, the fats that are also high in something called omega-6 fatty acids, the corn oil, the soy oil, the canola oil. And the omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation. Omega-3 fatty acids bring down the inflammation. And in America, well, in the world, we're supposed to have about a one-to-one -one ratio. 
one omega-3 to one omega-6, maybe two omega-6s to one omega-3. Most people in this country, a major majority of them, are about 20 omega-6s to one omega-3. And so we just live in this inflamed disease state. You don't have to do that anymore because I'm teaching you how to not do that. I'm going to start taking calls. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE here at the studio, and we can get you on the air. That number, by the way, rings through my offices when I'm not on the air. Sarah, how can we make your day better? Hi, Sarah. Oh, we dropped her. She disappeared. Well, Sarah, I hope you're still listening. I saw your questions about acid reflux, and that's a very good question. Um, we talk about this every show. The number one reason we see patients in our clinics in the Atlanta area of offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge is for pain. We're a chiropractic team. Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, car accidents. I've never seen a car accident ever where the car was damaged and the occupants weren't. You are not tougher than your car. So if the car is damaged, you need to get it fixed. So if you, most of the reasons we see pain, number one reason is for pain. The number two reason we see patients is for acid reflux. And people come to our office with acid, oh, there she, oh, Sarah's back. Let's get her back on. You there, Sarah? Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. 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 Okay, so, so the acid reflux is usually worse in the morning because when you're standing up, gravity is pulling your stomach down. And what acid reflux is, you have a sheet of muscle called your diaphragm, and you have a hole in the diaphragm, and the food drops through that hole, the hole closes, it falls into your stomach, you digest the food, and you pass it on to your small intestine. With patients with acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, I was a guest on a show earlier today, uh, chronic cough, uh, inflamed uh, uh, vocal cords, the stomach is pushing up through the diaphragm and acid is coming up into the throat. And so what we need to do is physically, in most cases, massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And with my patients, my team of doctors, when we check them, about 80 to 85% of the patients we check have some form of this. So we need to physically move the stomach back to its normal position. And that's the key, because you're taking medication to treat the symptoms but you're not getting to the cause. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, if it's on the left side, it's going up what's called the vagus nerve, because the vagus nerve controls your digestive system, and so it can shoot all the way up into your head, along the side of your face, absolutely. Um, but it'd be a good idea to get that fixed, because if you don't, it's going to lead to, uh, it could lead to things like leaky gut syndrome, because you're not breaking down your proteins properly. Um, all sorts of problems along those lines. So you get it fixed. Come see us. If you're in the Atlanta area, come see us. We'd love to check it. If it's there, we'll tell you. If it's not, we're going to tell you that too. We're not going to lie to you. So it's a pretty simple process, okay? Thanks, Terry. Appreciate it. Another call to call in. Do you take Medicare patients and supplemental insurance? The answer is yes. Uh, we do accept Medicare. Uh, one of the few doctors, I think, left in the world that still takes Medicare. And we take most insurances. Now, if you come see us, this is a, a common question. Many times you don't see, our, well, not many times, you may not see our name on your insurance list. That's because you may have what's called out-of-network benefits. And many times the out-of-network benefits are better than the in-network benefits. And I got to say this, I got to get on my soapbox here when people ask me questions about insurance. Don't let your insurance company dictate your treatment. People say, well, it's not covered by my insurance. I can't get that surgery. I had one of my coworkers ask me today. Uh, she had diarrhea for four weeks. And uh, she said, well, I don't know what to do. And they recommended like a, endosco uh, what a, 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 a colonoscopy. Well, my insurance doesn't cover it. Well, if you need it, don't let the insurance company dictate your treatment plan because their job is to not pay your bills. Their job is to save money. And the less they pay to you, the more money they make. It's business. It's capitalism. But that doesn't mean you should let that dictate your treatment. And I always tell people, it's, it's rarely that people don't get treatment in our office. But if they do, I say, what are you going to do if you don't get treatment here? I don't know. So you're just going to suffer? I don't know. I think you should. I think you should get fixed and not suffer because the problem is it's, it's probably going to get worse. And with supplements, that's why we try to keep our supplement costs so low. And in fact, I was talking to a couple of my producers before the show, and the Super Greens, the essential source, they said are a fourth of the cost of a similar product that's being sold out in California in a multi-level marketing group. And they said ours is as good or better than theirs. 
and it's a fraction of the price. So we try to keep our prices on the supplements as low as possible so you can afford them. And the minimum amount of nutrients you should be taking every day is, is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I take it every day, sometimes twice a day. If I have a couple of radio shows to do, if I have a live appearance, if I have other lectures, I'll take a double dose, one in the morning, one in the evening. So those, the, the Super Greens, the Essential Source, they're on my website, drjoe.com. If you're not going to do anything else, please do that. Because we're talking about hardening of the arteries today. And the reasons the arteries can get plaque buildup is because free radicals, they're kind of like Pac-Man, can eat away and oxidize oils, which can cause an inflammatory reaction. The way we fight free radicals is, number one, we don't produce them. So by eating a good diet, staying, keeping the body stress-free is a very good way to do it. But then taking antioxidants. Antioxidants neutralize free radicals before they can do their damage. And where do we get antioxidants from? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So the super green is the essential source, or an amazing source of antioxidants, and that's why I take them at least once a day. But we have to stop, cut down the production of free radicals. And so when it comes to your diet, please, I'm gonna ask you, stay away from the polyunsaturated fats, the corn oil, the soil, the vegetable oils, the canola oils, because of the high content of omega-6 fatty acids. And in fact, when you get into what, we, what I call black belt nutrition, what I teach you on the show is always brown belt nutrition. I'm going to give you some black belt stuff today. When you're ready to go to black belt nutrition, you want to stay away from most processed oils anyway. Because whether it's olive oil or coconut oil, it's still processed. It's not the whole food. Folks, got to go to break. Lines are lighting up. If you have a healthcare question, give us a call. 844-44-DR-JOE. 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, if you have questions, if you want to read my blogs, if you want to um, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, we live stream a lot of our shows. Or if you want to make an appointment, which I think you should, by the way, stop suffering. Come see us, drjoe.com, the number here, 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, do me a favor. Tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. A lot of people have life insurance through work. It's a great short-term benefit. Okay. All right. So over here from YouTube... Uh, so it says that when I first started taking super greens and essential source, I found myself tired and taking naps. Yes. Is this normal? Yes. What happens is when you start getting nutrients in your body, your body starts to clean itself out. We talked about the liver being clogged up and not being able to recycle cholesterol. And so if the, if the body gets clogged up and you start cleansing, many times it's, it's, it's physically exhausting, using up a lot of energy. Uh, people take super greens and essential source and start, start going to the bathroom for the first time, maybe once or twice a day, which is normal, by the way. Doc, I'm feeling amazing. And also your body heals when it rests. So if you take the super greens, the essential source, eventually you get a brush of energy. Most people get it right away. In your case, it probably is gonna gotta go through a detox first and change your diet too, by the way. So what else? Mr. Garrett, sir. Misty's back with us. Misty, the one who's off all her medications because of us. And now with uh, Misty this week, uh, her biggest question would be prepackaged vegan foods. She's made the complete transition, but now she's worried about the fact that she's not necessarily looking at the packaging. What should right. she be looking out for? Exactly. Um, cholesterol being one of those those big ones. Well, cholesterol wouldn't be in a vegan food. Cholesterol only comes from animal products. So people say, I can't do avocados, they have high cholesterol. No, cholesterol only comes from animal products. Animals produce it. So you do have to worry about the prepackaged foods because they'll use textured soy protein, they'll use a lot of salt, they'll use a lot of chemicals. So I prefer to go more whole food, not the store, but more whole natural foods. And if you don't know what to eat, you go to my website, drjoe.com, and we have a great uh, audio on there. It's, it's under the scout, it's under um, both of them, right? It's on the downloadable version? Yes. Okay. Um, and it's also on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called, So What Can I Eat? And there we talk about breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, the book, Eating Right for the Health of It, is an amazing guide. It has over 200 recipes in it. So now you've made the transition to vegan. Now we got to go away from processed vegan and more whole food vegan. It's a natural transition. Everybody does it, so you're right on track. You're right where you should be right now, Misty. Good job. Where is more of your black belt nutrition info available? Ah. When and where do you usually teach it? I teach it usually patients that come in. And on this show, I give you black belts uh, information. But when patients come into the office, I do that. And the reason is because if I do too hardcore stuff on the show, uh, I may scare people away. A lot of people listen to the show for the first time and go, okay, I can do that. That's not hard. And we got to transition them over. But black belt is real simple. 60 to 80% of your diet raw, uh, less food, 
Super greens an essential source every day. Uh, very little processed foods, very little oil. And it's, it, that's pretty much it. More whole food raw diet is the black belt stuff. And then we customize a nutrition plan for each person that comes in. And now you were talking about people being uncomfortable, possibly scaring them away. Yes. And we got somebody here on YouTube that falls right in line with that. Okay. Uh, they say that they had they have acid reflux and it hurts. Yes. But I don't see a doctor because I don't want to be criticized for my diet or lifestyle. Every day patients come in. We do a nutritional workup. My team of doctors. Patients say to my doctors, "You're going to get mad at me when you read this." And a lot of some patients, not a lot. Every now and then, a patient won't even fill out their diet information. I don't want you to know. No, we're not here to judge. We're here to help. And so if your doctor is picking on you, you need to find a, a different doctor. And that's, we'd love to be your doctors. We don't pick on anyone. We just give you information. But the acid reflux, I'm telling you, you got to take that stomach and pull it down away from the diaphragm. And when you do, choir boys and angels sing. It's really amazing when you fix the digestive system what happens. Because I have that problem too. And mine acts up. It's not fun. And he's willing to give you advice on things that he wouldn't do himself. Like eating eggs. What do you think about eggs? Yeah, I mean, I don't eat eggs. Uh, it's an animal product. If you're going to eat eggs, and once again, I try to negotiate with you. I know that you may not be ready to go, you know, I don't know, full Monty here. If you're going to eat eggs, they got to be organic. Not, not free range, not a high omega-3. Organic is the only word that matters when it comes to or animal products. So that's meat, butter, cheese, yogurt, eggs, ice cream. Organic only or don't eat it. I prefer you don't eat it. And then is there any type of way that you could cook eggs or... You know? The less you cook them, the better. Because when you, when you, you like scramble it, let's say, you're taking the cholesterol that's found in the yolk, which is not bad, by the way, but when you heat it, it oxidizes. And that's where the problem comes in. That's what we're talking about, the oxidation causing the free radical reactions, uh, oxidation uh, and irritating the artery walls causing the cholesterol to be uh, build up in there. So the less you cook it, the better. But that being said, got to run the risk of salmonella then too. So it's kind of a trade-off. That's why organic, you're going to have less likely to have salmonella anyway. All right, and this actually, uh, so Upload Vids over on YouTube asked a question that we were talking about before the show even started, and it's about energy. Yes. Uh, so he's asking, uh, for truck drivers, which would you recommend more for energy and alertness, the B-complex or the adrenal support? For an instant rush, probably the B-complex. I prefer you do both. Doing both is going to be the ideal thing, and the super greens and the essential source. And one of the reasons, like I did a show earlier today, I got a call yesterday. Can you come in and do an hour show? No prep time. Come on in. You're a guest on a show. Sure. Yesterday, a Friday, I was I did an hour show, a live uh, show with with a friend of mine, Eric von Hessler. He called he called me Thursday. Said, can you do Friday? So in order to keep the energy level high and to keep the brain working, the super green is the essential source. The B12, uh, the B complex, the adrenal, and then you might want to consider the nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels and that helps the brain work too. So all of those combined are still going to be cheaper than you drinking coffee. So I would rather do it that way and do it naturally than take the coffee, which is really bad for you. And drink a lot of water too. I used to be a truck driver, by the way, and out of Secaucus, New Jersey, I used to do tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. How much time do we have? Uh, about, about a minute, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We all keep looking at Ahmad. What's Ahmad doing? What's Ahmad saying? Yes. Ahmad's our boss, by the way. He's the one that runs the board, so he's he's the he's the, the producer. So he makes sure everything happens. It's amazes to me. You know, WSB here, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, never dead air. Always runs, always smooth. It just, it blows my mind how amazing people like Ahmad, what a job they do is just incredible. Here's a quick one. Once you lose your gallbladder, can it eventually cause a problem with blood sugar? Yes, because you're not breaking down your food properly. We got another question here. How, did you explain how to lower cholesterol? Okay, we can do that. Yeah, losing the gallbladder, you gotta be real careful. You might wanna come see us for that because you gotta be real careful what you eat because you're not breaking down fats like you're supposed to. Um, so you really gotta be careful and easy to digest fats, whole food fats, a lot of fiber, pushing the food through the colon and not eating a lot of fat at one time because that's what the gallbladder does. It stores bile, it breaks down your fat. It squirts dish detergent, for lack of a better word, bile into the small intestine to break down the fats. So if you had your gallbladder removed, you gotta be real careful not to eat concentrated levels of fats throughout the day. Wednesday, then Let's see here, we're going to be up, usually weather and then us, so. And once again, just joining us, welcome. I got to do the radio show live and then we do a breakout session at the breaks. Here we go. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito on WSB. 
Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. Thanks for being there. I do appreciate you spending time with me today. And uh, what we're talking about today is hardening of the arteries, the cholesterol buildup, and what causes it. And we had a caller call and didn't want to get on the air. How do you lower cholesterol? Well, the easiest way to lower cholesterol is go to a more plant-based diet. So you want to eat more fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. High fiber is going to be really important for you. And somebody uh, called in uh, on a stream that we were doing about uh, gallbladder. What happens if you have your gallbladder removed? Uh, that's a big issue. So high fiber diet, which is what? Plants. A lot of vegetables, a little bit of fruit, nuts, some nuts and seeds. Now, I, don't, I can't eat a lot of nuts and seeds because I gain weight. And I have a, a patient of mine. She had a lung transplant. Uh, she had cystic fibrosis, had a lung transplant, and her doctor told her to eat as much as she could to maintain her weight. And it didn't matter what it was, and sugar and ice cream and cakes and cookies. And when she first got under care with us, she was eating all these foods. She already had an autoimmune disease, and she was sick. And she was gain maintaining her weight, but she was sick all the time. And I said, what if we can put on weight with healthy food as opposed to non-healthy food? She goes, I'll do whatever you say. I want to stay alive. So we got her eating a lot more nuts, nut butters, almond butter, cashew butter, nut peanut butter. I'm not a big fan because why? It's high in omega-6 fatty acids, which can cause inflammation. And she's eating a lot of nuts. She's eating a lot of uh, the, the, uh, fatty foods like uh, olives and avocados, and she's putting on the weight. And she came in the other day and she was so happy. And she said, my doctor said, I've put on enough weight. They don't have to put me on an IV, an intravenous. And uh, she said, I'm really excited. And I said, well, I'm excited for you too. So with nuts and seeds, just be careful because they can build up, uh, they can put your weight on. Now, nuts and seeds and plants do not have cholesterol in them. Cholesterol only comes from animal products. So if you're going to eat an avocado, there's no cholesterol in there. So how do you lower your cholesterol? You go to a more plant-based diet. If you don't know what to eat, go to my website, drjoe.com, and we have uh, SoundCloud and we have the YouTube channel. One is downloadable, just audio. The other one is audio and video. And we have a, a show on there called So What Can I Eat? And Garrett, if you do a, if you do a search on there, if you do a search engine, will that show up? Uh, yeah, okay. top right on our website with the little search bar, you should find it. Okay, so just type in So What Can I Eat? And that should come up. If you can't, send me an email and I'll make Garrett figure it out. And um, you can listen to that. It's a whole hour of what to eat, breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks. Um, if you need a, a book, we have a book called Eating Right for the Health of It, an excellent guide on how to change your diet. It has recipes in it. And those are all on the website, drjoe.com. And, and the video, and the, well, the audio of So What Can I Eat is absolutely no charge. It's free. And when you go to a plant-based diet, cholesterol usually drops. And there's been so much research on plant-based diets and reversing heart attacks that it's really indisputable. Same thing with type 2 diabetes and going to a high-fiber diet that there's so much research now, well-documented, peer-reviewed research sh showing that if you do change your diet, basically what we've been talking about every day, many people with diabetes type 2 come off their medication, uh, people on cholesterol normalize their cholesterol levels, and don't stop your medication. Do this and then get it to the point where you don't need the medication. That's what I always try to teach you. So, and that's all on the website, drjoe.com. If you have a healthcare question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. And that number rings through my offices when I'm not on the air. So we're talking today about hardening of the arteries and what causes it. And we talked about inflammation. If oils oxidize, if they become rancid, uh, they can oxidize and irritate and it, it, get into the endothelial cells, the wall of the arteries and the blood vessels, and cause an inflammatory reaction. And when that inflammatory reaction occurs, something called macrophages come in, or macrophages, depending on how you want to say it, and they gobble up the oxidized oils, and that's, that starts to create this inflamed area where the body starts laying down cholesterol to encapsulate the inflammation. The body is protecting itself. It's very good. So the oxidized oils are caustic, and they kill a lot of the macrophages, which then when they die, they can release the toxic chemicals they have inside them. They're kind of like a garbage truck. And those toxic chemicals are now released again, so you kind of get caught in this cycle. And if the stable plaque, if the, if the body lays down this cholesterol around it, and it's stable, that's great. But if that cholesterol becomes loose and breaks off, that's what we call a blood clot. And once again, we said earlier, if it goes to the heart, it's a heart attack, goes to the brain, it's a stroke. So you got problems there. So if the plaque fails to encase the inflammation, that's when it starts to break off and cause problems. The oil is so caustic, it triggers blood in that area to coagulate. And now we start building up this, the, the, the narrowing of the blood vessels. And that's not a good thing. So what can cause this problem? We talked about free radicals. Where do free radicals come from? How about infections? Obvious infections, but also subclinical infections.
What's a subclinical infection? You're not aware of it. In fact, I had a, a root canal done many years ago, and I've got the little metal rod up in my tooth, you know, in, into my gum. And if you take an x-ray, you can see them. It's real clear. But the problem with those are that when you put that metal bar in there, there's little side canals in your tooth where the roots were. And those side canals can harbor anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic means they live without oxygen. And so you have this low-level subclinical infection all the time. And so that's what I have in my mouth, and all of you who have had, have had a root canal put in and a, and, a, and a tooth put in, you have this subclinical infection all the time. And so the subclinical inflection, infection can create free radicals. Free radicals, again, are like Pac-Man, they eat through things. Autoimmune diseases can cause free radicals, and that's a big problem too. And so if you have lupus, if you have cystic fibrosis, uh, the, the body can be producing these free radicals. Exposure to pesticides. Pesticides and herbicides. Herbicides kill plants, by the way, and pesticides kill bugs, can cause free radical reactions. Exposure to toxic heavy metals, mercury, aluminum, lead. You need zero amounts of heavy metal in your body. And what happens is when they get into the body, some people can get them out of the system, some people can't. And if the body has these heavy metals in there, it can create these free radicals. All right, let's take some more callers. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. Alyssa, how can we make your day better? Hello. Yes, Dr. Joe here. Hi. Oh, Lisa. I'm sorry. I thought I said, oh, Lisa. Okay, good. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> I'm so happy you're calling. I'm doing well. Okay, well, a couple of things. And I, you know, when I first started in practice 34 years ago, I hardly ever saw patients with kidney disease. And now I see them sometimes once, twice a week. It's very, very common. So a couple of things I'd recommend. Number one, you got to get on a low protein diet. Now, when I say low protein, most of us take in way too much protein because protein has to be filtered out through your kidneys. So plant-based proteins, much better choice than animal-based proteins. Very, if you're eating mostly plants, you don't have to worry about it. A sneeze coming on. Try not to sneeze here on you. Um, so if you're eating plants, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I, I, I've been a, I've been plant based now for 32 years. I'm fine. My muscle mass is fine. My heart's fine. So you don't need more protein. You need less. I would definitely cut out the meat. Absolutely, very very hard protein to break down and digest. Uh, second thing is uh, you want to make sure that the nerve supply to the kidneys are working. And this is the one thing that we as chiropractors can offer. The nerve supply to the kidneys for a woman is like kind of right below the bra strap, right in that area. That's the nerve supply that goes into the kidney. So if you have a pinched nerve there, that can adversely be affecting your kidneys. And then you want to make sure you're eating lots of nutrients like super greens and essential sore, salads, and get the body working more efficiently. And if you do those things, that might help. And if you want to call us, we may have to do a little more in-depth analysis with you, okay? Got to go to break. Thanks so much. Folks, the number here at the studio, 844-44-DR-JOE. If you want to order supplements, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We'd love to be your doctors. Go to my website, drjoe.com, and you can make an appointment or 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Does this sound like you? Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches? Chances are you'd benefit from chiropractic care. Most people benefit from chiropractic care because chiropractic care tries to get to the cause of your problems and not just cover up the symptoms. If you're ready to get well, I want you to go to my website, drjoe.com, or call 844-44-DR-JOE and make an appointment for you, your friends, and your family today. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Make an appointment today so we can help get you well and keep you well. Hey, folks. Monica Kaufman pearson here for Castile. You can deal with cold That's water. Friend, Monica. Car All right. More questions. All right. We got a great one from Doyle, if I said that right. Okay. I have a problem with circulation in my right arm. I have just had cubital and carpal tunnel surgery. Okay. The lack of circulation will cause it to heal much slowly, I'm told. Yes. Would, would taking the oxidized supplement you have help? And that'd be the uh, nitric, nitric oxide. oxide. Nitric oxide, not oxidized, different thing. Nitric oxide will help the circulation, but what I find in most cases, like patients like you, there's a pinched nerve and blood vessel in the lower part of the neck. That's the nerve and blood supply that goes into the hand. So I would strongly advise you get that checked by us or somebody who knows what they're doing. Open up the nerve and blood supply into the hand. You're probably going to heal a lot better. 
But the nitric oxide, yes, may help, but it's treating the symptom, not the cause. You want to do both. LDL versus HDL. Going to cover that, man. LDLs, that was my next thing to cover, as a matter of fact. So LDLs oxidize much more uh, readily or frequently than HDLs. And that's where the problem is. The oxidized cholesterol is where the problems come in. So getting on a good plant-based diet, things like super greens, essential source. If your bowels aren't moving, Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser, that's a product we have on the website. Get the bowels moving. That should help, along with a good diet, stabilize the cholesterol levels. But we're going to talk about HDLs and LDLs in a second, why there's good and bad cholesterol. All right, Richard has two questions. Two questions, Richard. That kind of come cow. together. Okay. Uh, first question is, are there too many carbs in a plant-based diet? And secondly, says, I'm trying to take in protein and not so many carbs. Seems like a tough mix. Any recommendations to find a good balance through a book or online source? Sure, absolutely. Uh, you can look up a vegan ketogenic diet. Um, if you're eating a lot of salads and plants, uh, uh, vegetables, you're not going to get a whole lot of fats anyway and carbohydrates. I don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. Um, I don't eat a lot of fats. I eat mostly plants. Uh, breakfast is always super greens and essential source. This morning I mixed in a, uh, about a quarter of a banana and some frozen blueberries with some coconut milk, unsweetened. So there's your low carbs. Whip that up. Um, then I had, what else did I have today? I had a salad. Of course, I have a salad every day. A little nutritional yeast for beta glucan to get my immune system working. And then I had soup. I, I, I'm on this soup craze all of a sudden. I made some split pea soup, uh, which is high in fiber. And the thing is with carbs, you're looking at something called net carbs. What that means is how many carbs do you have? Let's say it's 50 grams of carbs. But then you had 30 grams of fiber. So you subtract that, you only had 20 grams of net carbs. So if you're eating a plant-based diet, you're getting a lot of fiber to offset the carbs. The carbs come in when you start eating processed foods, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, crackers. That's where the carbs come in. But I eat a low-carb diet, and I eat an okay fat diet. I'll eat avocados and things like that, but I try not to use a lot of processed oils. And a question I've been neglecting, and that is ah, bioidentical hormone hormones. therapy. Yes. Opinion. My opinion is that if you get your body producing its own hormones, you don't need to take the bioidenticals. If you take the bioidenticals, what's going to happen is your body's going to stop producing its own or slow down its own production. So that's why I'd rather figure out what organ isn't working and specifically nourish that organ. So, okay. All right. Now, I was going to get to this question on Instagram, but i got to stop and answer Suburban Hillbilly on YouTube. Go ahead. Vegan and keto. Now I'm completely confused. Vegan and or vegan or? Vegan and keto. You Absolutely. You said vegan ketogenic sure. diet. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the ketogenic diet, you're getting most of your, your diet, most of your uh, calories from fats. If you're going to do fats, I'd rather you do whole food fats. Avocados, nuts, uh, uh, olives. So that's the approach. I'm not a big fan of the ketogenic diet, though. Because if you're going to do the ketogenic diet, the studies are now showing that people on a ketogenic diet are increasing the risk of heart disease by 30%. So vegan is the way to go. Vegan whole food is the way to go. And if you have fats in there, they got to be whole food fats. And does it get confusing? Yeah, until you break it down to the bottom line is eat a lot of fruits, vegetables, some nuts and seeds. If you want to eat, gain weight, more nuts and seeds. If you want to not gain weight, less nuts and seeds. And you'll be fine. Little trick I do is I have in my freezer, you open my freezer, I got bags of frozen broccoli, frozen peas. Um, and what I'll do is I'll boil them up. Oh, got to go back. Listen to Dr. Joe we'll be Zito back with you, buddy. On News 95.5 at AM 750 WSB. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're spending a little time with us together. We're talking today about hardening of the arteries. What causes it? What you can do to prevent it? And what you can do, interesting enough, to reverse it. Dr. McDougall's done a lot of research on reversing heart disease. And if you read his books and read his research, he has people all the time um, that he gets on a plant-based diet and their heart disease reverses. Well, we were taught way back when in school, when I went to school 30 many years ago, 30 many years ago, that heart disease was there. It, was, it, it, is what it, it is what it is, and you just got to deal with it. Little fun story, right before this, uh, earlier today, I did a guest spot on another on my friend's show. She called me up yesterday, asked me to cover for, uh, a spot for her. I said, sure. And uh, they had another show on, and they had some uh, eye doctors in the reception area uh, waiting to come on to the show, the next show after mine. And uh, so we started chatting, very nice folks. 
And we were talking about uh, ophthalmology and um, I said, well, I do a lot of nutrition stuff. And I said, I have a condition called macular degeneration called drusen. So I was told basically nine, 10 years ago, you're in deep trouble. It's, a, it's got to stay the same and get worse and you, you may go blind from it. And it is what it is. So I started taking on a regular basis, super greens and essential source, went to a good diet. And now, was it nine years later, my vision has, my damage to the eyes has improved about 70, maybe 80%. That's unheard of because uh, macular degeneration doesn't get better. It just gets worse. And so it's pretty cool. And I was sharing that with them and they said, oh yeah, a lot of stuff we do in, in, the, in the world of uh, ophthalmology is nutrition based. And I said, that's great. So hopefully we can work together. I didn't get their cards. I should have. And hopefully we can work together on that because I'd love to work with patients like myself. I mean, hey, I'm living proof. And when I teach postgraduate classes, I teach doctors, uh, they get credit every year. Doctors have to take so many hours of, of postgraduate classes. And when I teach that, I always have pictures of my eyes, the slides from my eyes, my retina. And I show them that even though you were told this is not reversible, here's proof that it is. And we talk about that with heart disease and a lot of conditions. If you get a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system and good nutrition, in most cases, we get excellent results. Not all, I can never guarantee anything. I can never promise anything, but I can tell you after 34 years, we do pretty good work. And as chiropractors, patients come to us for the main reason is pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. And my doctors are really good at getting rid of that stuff because I'm their patient too. And Garrett's their patient, my producer here. And so we want to make sure we're getting the best treatment possible because when I'm on the table, I'm not, I'm not Dr. Joe anymore. I'm Joe the patient and I want to make sure I'm getting the best care available. And my doctors are pretty awesome at that. So that's why if you want to make an appointment, you can go to my website, drjoe.com, uh, or you can give us a call. The number is 844 Joe. If you have a question, call that number now and we'll get you on the air if we can if you have a good question and if you want to make an appointment when i'm not on the air you can always dial that number 84444 dr joe all right let's start keep taking some callers here james how can we make your day better i'm well right Oof, stress. Well, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. So is the question about eggs or is the question about protein? I, I, I missed that. Right. Okay. Right. Sure. But if you're going to eat eggs, make sure they're organic because you don't want to get the steroid, the pesticides, the hormones, the steroids that they give the, 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 the chickens. Um, you want to make sure that they're fed a good diet because if they feed them rancid soybeans or rancid uh, flax seeds, you get the rancidity into the egg and we don't want that. So if you're going to eat eggs, I recommend organic only. And the fact that eating the eggs change your cholesterol levels, I hope that the, again, the reason we have the, the bad cholesterol levels, it could be a liver issue too. And if you eating more plants, more fiber, that's going to help clean out the colon, clean out the liver. So if you're going to eat eggs, just make sure they're organic. And like I said, that, that, that's a, a call I'm fine with you doing. That's, that's perfectly fine. And if you need more protein, you only need about 8% of your total caloric intake is protein. Anything beyond that has to be filtered out through your liver and your kidneys. So that's why I like that high, high fiber, high plant-based diet, which is going to be the best thing for you. And if you're going to do the eggs, I, I support that as long as you do organic. How about that? Oh, perfect. Excellent. Yeah, if you're raising your own, you know what you're feeding them and you're not feeding them processed commercial junk and, you know, rancid soybeans and things like that. So perfect. Thanks, James. Appreciate the call. Folks, if you have a question, 84444-DR-JOE. Joe, how can we make your day better? Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm not a big fan of the processed uh, vegetarian stuff. And off the air, somebody called in with a question on that too. Um, if you're eating a lot of processed vegan foods, it's better than the non-processed, than, than the processed non-vegan foods. But it's still, they'll add a lot of salt. They'll have soybeans in there. They, they use textured soy protein, which frees up glutamic acid, which if I have time, I'm going to cover that today and how that can create free radicals in your body. So a lot of the veggie meats, I'm not a big total fan of. Um, so the less processing you're going to do, the better. Yeah. Exactly. No, and, 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 and it's a good transition. What, what most people do is they'll transition into the processed veggie meats and the vegan meats, and that's great. And then they'll say, I don't feel good when I eat those. What if I just ate lighter? What if I just had more fruits and vegetables? Oh, gosh, I do feel better there. And then you transition out of that. So it's kind of like a rite of passage when most people change your diet. So as long as you know there's an end game to it, you're fine. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the call. Folks, if you have a question, 844 doctor joe My website, drjoe.com. On there, over a 1,000 hours of podcast. You can also order the supplements. Please, if you're going to do nothing else, at least do the super greens, the essential source. But the nitric oxide for circulation, most of us are deficient in B-complex, adrenal support, probiotics, very important as, uh, for your immune system. All that's on the website, drjoe.com. And you can call the office at 844 doctor joe to make an appointment when I'm not on the air. Offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Let's tee it up for Special Olympics Georgia. And so I've got to fix my hair after I take the headset off. So don't have much hair left anyway. Yes. Uh, Garrett, so more back questions. to uh, the vegan keto. Uh, keto, the yes. Keto. And how can, how can you have both? You can have both. both. Absolutely. You go to a plant-based diet. And then add extra oils to it. But again, I'm not a big fan of the extra processed oils. But you can do it if you want to. Organic coconut oil, organic olive oil, organic avocado oil. So you can do it. But I'd rather you just go more plant-based and less processed oils. But you can do it, absolutely. A lot of people do it. And they do great. Good Lord, a lot of people calling in. <coughs> All right. Here's a directly related question. Hi, Dr. <coughs> Joe. Hi. I've had high cholesterol for 20 years now, 5'2 uh -huh. and 118 pounds. Okay. All the women in my family have high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. My DO, doctor, Dr. Said, mm -hmm. uh, doctor said that because I had a good particle size, uh -huh. uh, or that it's because I had a good particle size. Right. What does that mean? Okay. Um, they don't take any medication. Uh, they heard about the, the red yeast rice. What are right. your thoughts on that? The red yeast rice acts just like uh, statin drugs do. They prevent you from producing cholesterol, also prevent you from producing CoQ10. So I'm not a big fan of that. The particle size is the high-density lipoproteins and low-density lipoproteins. And the HDLs don't oxidize as well as the LDLs. So the LDLs, the low-density lipoproteins, are the ones that cause the problems. So the HDLs are the good cholesterol, the LDLs are the bad cholesterol. And so the fact you probably had a good ratio of more HDLs and better L and less LDLs, that's probably what he's talking about with particle size. So if you have a genetic predisposition, and one in 100 people do, then it's something that you may need medication for. The other 99 out of 100 do extremely well when they follow things we're talking about today. And here's a question from earlier that I was waiting to Hi, get earlier. to, and that is... <laughs> Um, what do you do, what do you eat for Thanksgiving? All the side dishes. Uh, Thanksgiving is one of the easiest days of the year to eat. Because you could have the, you know, again, I'm not a potato fan, but I'll have potatoes and the squash and the asparagus and the broccoli and the string beans. And a lot of times there's dips before you have hummus or avocado, you know, uh, guacamole. And so that's a real easy one. That's a no-brainer at all. So Thanksgiving's easy. What my girlfriend and I started doing was... I mean, and obviously we started out trying to make those big elaborate meals, but one of our favorite things for the holidays is to do a roasted cauliflower. It's a Perfect. whole head of cauliflower and you roast it in the oven, you dress it up just like you would turkey, uh, we baste it all the way through, it tastes awesome and there's a ton of recipes online for that as well. Okay, I gotta do my, uh, my liners. So, hold on, folks. i got to do this because the stations all around the country need these things done. So.
Josh Lomas likes your haircut. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. This week, we're talking about cholesterol and hardening of the arteries. What causes it and what you can do to help prevent it. Dr. Joe Esposito here. This week on my show, we're talking about hardening of the arteries and cholesterol in your blood and things that you can do to help get it right. Hey, we're talking about hardening of the arteries and cholesterol buildup in your... Hey, we're talking about hardening of the arteries and cholesterol buildup and what you can do about it this week on the Dr. Joe Esposito Show. There's our liners. Okay, we're back. And yes, I based the, uh, the cauliflower with a mushroom gravy. Ah, uh, yes, you can make a lot of... Vegan mushroom gravy is awesome. In fact, I have some in my freezer from last year, actually. So, and a great recipe in my book, Eating Right for the Health of It, great recipe for mushroom gravy in there. It freezes real well, take it out, you can put it over uh, pretty much whatever you want. Like you said, you can do it over uh, roasted cauliflower, um, and I just love the mushroom gravy, it's crazy. I, I don't do a lot of corn, but uh, being Italian, polenta, organic polenta, which is basically grits, and put a little mushroom gravy over that, it's awesome. So, what else you got? Um, let's see here. Okay. Hello, Dr. Joe. I have a family member suffering with pain in tailbone. Yes. Especially while driving or sitting for long periods of time. Uh huh. She had some text s test X rays and a couple other tests that they they can't remember. But um, she's used different kinds of creams. She saw an orthopedic and a chiropractor, uh, orthopedic doctor and a chiropractor. Still in pain still irritating to sit down. Okay. There's a little tiny bone at the, at the bottom of your tailbone called your coccyx. And it's a little triangle bone. I don't know. It's probably the size of two of your fingertips. And right underneath there sits a, a group of nerves called the ganglion impars. And if the coccyx twists out of place, you put pressure on this group of nerves called the ganglion impars, and that can cause some real serious problems. So you, you got to find somebody who knows how to adjust a coccyx. And it's a tricky little bugger. And you got to know how to do it and do it right because it's a very painful area. So I'm not saying your chiropractor didn't do a good job, but you might want to consider a second opinion on that one uh, to find somebody who knows how to specifically work on the coccyx bone because it's tricky. But when you when it's out of place, oh, it hurts like a son of a gun and it affects your whole nervous system. Poor Gary's jumping around from all these different social media outlets here. All right. So uh, Michelle, I believe. Getting off bioidentical with no ovaries, how will, how would I get my estrogen and testosterone? Your adrenal glands. See, what's cool about the body is you always have backup plans. Everything except the heart. I gotta, I gotta talk to God when I die and talk about the heart. I'm not happy. We should have two hearts. Men have no hearts, of course, right, Michelle? So, <laughs> well, we have two kidneys, we have two lungs, uh, but with the heart, I'm just, anyway, I, I digress. The adrenal glands, you have two of them, produce uh, pregnenolone, which becomes DHEA, which becomes your sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. If you're under stress, chemical, emotional, physical stress, it, that, that DHEA now becomes cortisol, which causes you to lay down fat, which produces more estrogen. Um, so I would want to find out, A, do we have any stress in the body? Chemical, emotional, physical stress. Fix the physical and the chemical. That's usually pretty easy to fix. The emotional then gets easier to fix. And then by supplementing, I take Dr. Joe's adrenal support every day. By supplementing the adrenal glands, hopefully you'll get those hormone levels back up. You usually do. And that's my approach. That's what I do. Because as you get older, your, your hormone levels do drop. And it's a good idea to kind of jumpstart them and boot them, boot them up again. So I would try that. And then from a chiropractic standpoint, I would check the nerve supply in the mid-back. That's the nerve supply that goes into the adrenals. So if you have a pinched nerve going to the adrenals, that can affect adrenal function too. Then we also got to look at the thyroid and the pituitary because the thyroid, the pituitary, and the adrenals all feed off each other. So you can't just fix one, you got to fix all three. And that's so that's why you got to find somebody who understands uh, the whole whole body mechanism. Like us, for example. Poor Garrett's bouncing around here. Next question. No new questions, uh, but I would like to know, what'd you eat today? What do you today? Well, I said I made soup. I'm on this big soup craze, so I had some split pea soup today. 
I had some asparagus because they were on sale at one of my favorite stores. So I had asparagus today. Uh, I had blueberry, well, blueberry smoothie with super greens and essential source in there. I had a salad. That's right. I had a salad with some sunflower seeds and some nutritional yeast and a couple of raisins on it. I was, I was getting crazy today. I threw some organic raisins on there. And then apple cider and oil vinegar dressing. And did I eat anything else? I had a lot of asparagus. I had two servings of asparagus because they were on sale. So I cooked those puppies up. And, uh, and that was it. And then some tea. I had some tea and super greens and essential source twice. A few clouds and comfortables we had through this evening. Temperatures falling back through the 70s into the 60s. We'll start Monday. More questions? Monday with a low 61 in if you have questions, folks, send them in. We only have another one, there, one more hour to show here. So. We've got a lot of callers. Holy cow. We'll just we'll drop this to them or right back up. Monday. Okay. That rate chance comes up to 30% Tuesday. And about one hour mark. Oh, that's right. We can only do Instagram for one hour at a time. So we've got to drop you and then pick you back up again. On Wednesday, an isolated morning shower. My goodness, look at all these callers. Holy Thanks cow. Thanks for coming back, guys. Welcome back. 70 degrees Welcome on Peachtree Street at News 95.5 and AM 750 WSB. Depend on it. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Hey everybody, Dr. Joe here. So glad we spent a little time together. We're talking today about hardening of the arteries and heart disease and what causes it. And this is the thing that gets me every day. Patients come in our office, every, uh, 34 years now. Patients come in and they'll say, Doc, I've been diagnosed with blank. Osteoarthritis is a good one. And I always say, do you know what caused it? No. Okay, if you don't know what caused it, how are you going to treat it? I don't know. And so I answer them. Osteoarthritis is a mechanical condition. Bones are out of alignment, rubbing up against each other. The body produces these specific white blood cells to attack the inflammatory reaction that occurs when the bones are out of place. And those white blood cells are not site specific, which means they go all over the body. And they attack your hip and your knee and your foot and your, all your joints, but the most freely movable, weakest joints in the body suffer the most damage, which are where? Your fingers. So people say, oh doc, I got arthritis in my fingers. Chances are that's not their primary site, it's a secondary site. And so we got to go through the body and then find out where the primary site is that's causing the inflammatory reaction. And from a chiropractic standpoint, if we can adjust those bones back into place. And when we do that, that's when people get better. And so that's why we try to get to the cause of the problems and not just treat the symptoms. We talked about oxidized oils in the body and oils, especially polyunsaturated oils like uh, olive oil, not olive oil, uh, uh, corn oil, soy oil, uh, canola oil, they oxidize because either they go rancid before you eat them or uh, they get in your body and they're exposed to free radicals, which oxidize them. And that they, they can burrow into the walls of the arteries and cause an inflammatory reaction. And then the body starts to lay down cholesterol to kind of protect that area. And that's how you get the placking. And then the body can start to clot in that area and you start to narrow the arteries. And that becomes a problem. And so we can do several things, and surgery is just amazing for this. We can either take out that blocked artery, or we can go in there and kind of rotor it out and kind of clean it out like you would a drain. And it's amazing. Blows my mind what we can do with surgery. But my concern is no one ever gets to the cause of why you had it to begin with. So if we can get to the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms, we're in a much better place. Okay? And that's what we're talking about today. Lots of callers. If you have a question, 844-44-Dr. Joe. Let's see. Brett, you've been holding the longest. How can we make your day better? Sure. Sure. No, sleep apnea. We see it all day, every day. Um, many times people, do you have acid reflux or heartburn, burping, gas, bloating? Okay. Okay, so the first thing, good. Yeah, we always check that because if the stomach is pushing up against the diaphragm, the diaphragm needs to drop down so you can suck air in. And when people lay down, gravity doesn't assist pulling the diaphragm down anymore. And so many times they'll have sleep apnea. The other concerns we have is the, the fourth cervical nerve, which is coming out of the neck, 
is the phrenic nerve, and that controls your diaphragm. So if you have a pinched nerve in your neck, that can affect the diaphragm, which can affect sleep. Then we got to look at your diet. Yeah, do you have a, a high mucus diet? A lot of dairy products, a lot of meat, uh, not a uh, wheat, I'm sorry. Dairy products and wheat can cause mucus, which can then, when you lay down, clog up things, and that can cause the sleep apnea as well. So we look for pinched nerves, we look for the diaphragmatic, does it, is it go up and down, and then we look at the diet. Those are the three things we approach with sleep apnea patients. All right, well, let's try this, Brett. Cut out the wheat and the dairy for two weeks. Now, none, not even a little, not a bite, not a sip, not a nothing. No wheat, no dairy for two weeks. And read the ingredients, because wheat's in a lot of different products. At the end of two weeks, start eating wheat, wheat and dairy again. And see how you feel. And if the sleep apnea gets better and then goes away, guess what? We just solved your problem for free. How about that? Thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right. Rhonda, how can we make your day better? Hi. Excellent. Excellent. Yay. Good. Yes. Sure. Uh-huh. Sure. Right. Well, that's weak. Good. Okay. So you get, you get your B12 from animals um, because when you eat flesh, the bacteria, rotten flesh, the bacteria eat it and they produce B12. So one of the deficiencies we have with plant-based folks is the B12. Now you don't need a lot of B12, but here's the thing. You have to be able to absorb your B12. So if, you, if your stomach acid is low, and I did a show on this a couple of weeks ago, if the stomach acid is low, you're not producing something called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is produced in your stomach that allows you to absorb B12. So a couple of things we can do is, number one, always check the nerve supply to the stomach and check the stomach itself. Now, for someone, how old are you, Rhonda? 49, hey, you baby. I have socks older than you. Um, so with the B12 deficiency, I take Dr. Joe's B-complex every day. And it gives you a burst of energy, but it gives you the complete spectrum of B vitamins as well. So I would say the super green is the essential source. I would add Dr. Joe's B complex to it. And then if we still have an issue, I would add enzyme support. And at your age, uh, I would probably get the enzyme support as well. It's on the website, drjoe.com. And take the enzymes whenever you eat a cooked meal. Now, if you do raw meal, you don't need the enzymes. If you're eating cooked food, I'd recommend taking the enzymes as well which can help break down your food and hopefully help get that, the, the, the intrinsic factor back to normal again too. And that should solve the problem. All right, so go to website, doctor. Yeah, what, next time you order your super greens and essential source, which you've been taking anyway, order the B-complex and the, and the uh, enzyme support and let's see how that works. Okay, thanks so much. Folks, gotta go to break. If you have a healthcare question, 84444 Joe. my website, drjoe.com. Tons of information there, podcasts, you can download them, watch videos. Uh, follow me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram. We live stream a lot of these shows on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, send us your email address so we have your email address so we can put you on a newsletter list. We'll never give out your email address to anyone. And a lot of times we have specials running for supplements and specials for our, our offices. And if you want to make an appointment, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge in the Atlanta area. Just go to the website, drjoe.com, or call 844-44-DR-JOE. We're not on the air. Hey, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. If you're like most people, you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches. Maybe it's time to stop suffering and it's time to take action. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, why don't you come see me and my team of doctors and let's see if you have a problem that we can help. Go to my website, drjoe.com or call 844-44-DR-JOE to make an appointment today because so many of you are out there suffering needlessly and we want to put a stop to that. Come see us at our offices in Marietta, Stockbridge, and Duluth. Make an appointment today so we can help get you well and keep you well. Ready to start those long overdue home renovations? Oh. Okay. So, I'm going to try really hard on this one. All right, let's see. I got the bell. We, so you were, get it right. we were talking about something when we first came back on the air. Mm -hmm. And Suburban 
asked, so is this a cause of leukocytosis? Is that right? You got it right. Ah. Leukocytosis, yes, absolutely. So is what a cause of leukocytosis? I guess that you got the word right. Yeah. Whenever Garrett um, makes a mistake, we, we got to get an er buzzer, but when he gets it right, we hit the bell. So he got the word right. So what's the cause of leukocytosis? I missed the question. Uh, when we first came back on the air, you were talking about... Do you know where you were in your notes? Hmm. We'll skip it and come back. And okay. Suburban, if you could let us know what that was in regards to... Yeah, back us up a little bit. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, about sleep apnea again. I heard another chiropractor here on YouTube mention that RNA helps solve a form of sleep apnea. Can you speak to that? It might. Um, you're taking an RNA supplement, I guess you're talking about, ribonucleic acid. Uh, it might, but once again, in my experience, if we get the body right and your body can produce its own RNA, of course, and you do that by giving it the raw materials like super greens and essential source, and so that would be my recommendation. I mean, you could try the RNA, but I don't know how that would s help sleep apnea. I don't, I don't, I'd have to understand the mechanism better than what he was talking about. I sold mattresses for a good mm -hmm. long while. Did a lot of marketing for, for mattress companies. Yep. Um, something that I was taught was how to use a pillow correctly. Yes. That you should not have the pillow on your shoulders. Rather, grab those corners and pull them up. Yes. To where they're around your, around your neck. Uh-huh, exactly and right, yes. And just doing that will, instead of elevating your shoulders, you'll elevate your head, and that can open up that pathway in your throat mm -hmm. that, that has a, a big cause for sleep apnea, as well, um, any, any kind of bed that, or any way that you can lift your head up a, a, a decent amount. Yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. what's the goal? You want your, your lungs, your sinuses above your lungs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want to be able to breathe, too. And that's yeah. why if you're doing CPR, mm -hmm. what do we do? We tilt the head back to open up the airwaves. Yep. So, you know, you can, if you put a pillow there and, and not, not your shoulders up, but your head, that should help, too. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, okay, so. What high white blood cells. Well, I know what it is, but. No, no, no. Um, that was what it was in regards to, high white blood cells. was I in high white blood cells? Well, an infection could cause high white blood cells. So with leukocytosis, you have to find out, is there an infection going on? Or is it an abnormal production of high white blood cells? And if it's an abnormal production, then we got to start looking at bone marrow and we got to start looking at leukemia. Um, but if it's just, if you have a low grade infection, maybe it was a low grade infection. The answer is could be, yes. If you have a low grade infection in your body, even a subclinical infection, that could lead to that, yes. Okay, uh, waiting on Okay. Suburban to give us a little more, but are you familiar with CVSB, uh, cyclical or cyclic vomiting syndrome? My daughter has it and it's controlling her. What can she do? Yes, we had a patient come in last week, was it? Or the week before? Usually young girls have this, uh, teens and tweens. Uh, yeah, a lot of times what happens is they, they start having a spasmodic condition of the abdominal area. And it, many times I trace it back to a vagus nerve issue. And this gal came in the same thing. She was just vomiting. She couldn't figure out why. And we got, we kicked in what's called her parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic slow you down. Sympathetic speed you up. And so we had to balance out her sympathetics and her parasympathetic. So by adjusting the stomach away from the diaphragm, adjusting the neck, and in the middle of the back is where you, what, what's called the sympathetic chain ganglion. We got to stabilize that. And then we put warm towels just over her abdomen at night. And that seemed to help tremendously. So the me mechanical stuff and the hot towel seemed to work pretty well for her. All right, coming back soon here, I think. So. University up to the varsity. Travel advisory roadwork causing problems 75 northbound from 285 up to the south loop and in both directions on 75 between Ackworth and Cartersville used Highway 41 there or the express lanes a little bit further south. They're heading northbound. Coming up soon, right folks. Do you believe in herbs and essential oils to treat illness? Yes. Between Cobb Parkway and 75. But again, heavy, slow organic. Down there. Always follow the doctor's orders and then we try to get you better so you don't need the medication. Five most dangerous words in the English language are maybe it will go away. Stop suffering and start getting well. Dr. Joe Esposito is on WSB. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. We're talking about hardening the arteries and cholesterol buildup in the arteries. And I see it so often in our patients. We take an x-ray of the low back and we take a side view or even some front views. We see it 
and we see this cholesterol buildup, and sometimes it's called phleboliths, uh, which is actually, we get a little calcification of the vein area where the valves are, uh, but you get the hardening of the arteries, and, and so if it's bad enough, it's called an aortic aneurysm or dissecting aortic aneurysm, and it's a big issue, and I thought I really need to do a show on this and tell people why they're getting it. And that's what we're talking about today. So if you're just tuning in, this show is going to be on our website, drjoe.com. And you can listen to this in the hundreds, well over a thousand hours of other shows. Uh, we have it on SoundCloud, so it's an audio version. So you can download that if you want. And then we have the uh, video versions of them. And those are on the website, drjoe.com. And you could pick any topic you want. And I really do recommend you start doing this. And one of the things we teach when I teach students on how to study, study techniques, is review your notes every day. And the more you review it, the easier it's going to be. Same thing with the shows. Listen to a show that you have an interest in. Maybe listen to it several times. Listen to shows that are similar to it so that you can educate yourself so that you can naturally get well and stay well. i got a few callers holding. Let's get these folks first. Patricia, how can we make your day better? Oh, you're a good girl, Patricia. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so you're doing plant-based diet, you have glaucoma. Now, I have macular degeneration, and so I started taking super greens and essential source about whatever, eight, nine years ago, and mine has gotten about 60 or 70, it depends the way you look at 70, 80% better, uh, which is just unheard of in, in the world of, uh, of macular degeneration. It never gets better, and I could be blind by now, and instead I'm getting better and better every day and every year. So, so with the glaucoma, you get the pressure buildup in the eyes, and so something that might help is taking some digestive enzymes. And again, no guarantees on this, but take them between meals. We have one on my website, drjoe.com, Dr. Joe's Enzyme Support, and take them on an empty stomach. Because if you take it with food, they can actually digest the food. They kind of work on the food. That's it. If you take it on an empty stomach, they can absorb it into the blood system. And if the, the protease may be able to get into that area and help break up some buildup that you might have behind the eye. So that would help. And then the other thing that might help, and again, these are all mites, is chiropractic care. Because if you have pinched nerves and blood vessels in the back of the neck, those are the nerves that control the eyes. And if you do that, that may help release some of the pressure as well. And if you're being a good plant-based girl, that's the way you want to stay because you want to make sure you have good circulation. So you might want to consider Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support as well to increase circulation throughout the body. So I would say the super greens, the essential source, the nitric oxide, and the enzyme support might be a good, good start for you uh, and see where we go in there. Let's do it for four, five, six months and see how we do. My pleasure, Patricia. And once again, folks, I can't tell you to take drugs or not take drugs. I can't tell you to have surgery or not take surgery. But I can tell you the things that I've seen that work in my offices and things that work for me personally uh, because I wouldn't lie to you. Why would I have no reason to lie to you? And all those products, by the way, are on the website, drjoe.com. Let's talk to Chad. How can we make your day better? Yes. Uh-huh. Sure. Sure. Good. Sure. Good. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. Well, spelt is still a form of wheat, and it still has gluten in it, wheat gluten, and that is gliadin and gluten, and so it still causes allergic, uh, inflammatory reaction. So I would stay away from the, the spelt bread if you could. Um, the type O blood type, Dr. Diadama wrote the book. He based it on his father's research. He based it on uh, Dr. Kelly's research. He was a dentist, I think, in the 30s. I'm not, don't quote me on that. And what Dr. Kelly found is that people that were very sick and they had type O blood seemed to do well or better if they ate small amounts of raw organic meat. Well, in the book, we don't talk about small amounts of raw and organic. Now, the book's fine. I'm not knocking the book at all. But what I would say is if you're going to eat meat, it's got to be small amounts. It's got to be organic. And I've had many patients with O blood. I'm an A positive. But people had, with O blood who do very well not eating animal products. And if you read the book, it doesn't say you should eat meat. It says you can eat meat. Big difference. So... 
Um, so my feeling is if you're going to eat any animal products, and again, I'm a realist, I understand not everybody's going to do what I say, at least do organic if we can. And I'll, I'll, well, well, unfortunately there isn't a good bread out there because all the breads, even if they're gluten-free, still break down into sugars. So here's what, here's a little inside scoop for you, Chad, because you're listening, you get the inside scoop. When you start changing your diet, when you do things like super greens and essential source, you eat more a salad at least once a day, you try to eat something raw at every meal, eventually you don't need bread anymore. Because bread just breaks down into a sugar, and sugar stimulates the nucleus accumbens in your brain, which stimulates the dopamine receptor sites, and you get high from it. So the only reason you need bread is because you're getting high from it. So once we start to cut, the, get, get the nutrients in the body that you need, the bread is easy to put to the wayside. It's not that big a deal. You just got to get to that point in your life. Okay? Thanks, Chad. Appreciate the call. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us in the Atlanta area, of offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We're a team of chiropractors, and we work on the nervous system, getting, hoping, hopefully getting rid of your neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, there are special adjustments we can do to actually adjust the stomach and pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And we do that on a lot of our patients, myself included. And then we want to make sure you got the right diet. So the minimum amount of nutrients you should be taking every day is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. They taste great. Uh, I mix them up with cold water, uh, coconut milk, almond milk. I drink it at least once a day. If I have a big day, if it's a uh, cold and flu season, if I'm going to be uh, stressed out, I'll take it twice a day. I have patients sometimes take it three times a day. It tastes great, relatively inexpensive compared to anything else there on the market. I've compared. There's nothing out there that I can find that gives you a way better bang, a better bang for your buck than what we do. So we give you a lot more for a lot less. And uh, those are all on the website, drjoe.com. And uh, we're also available on Amazon too. I personally take B-Complex every day. I take adrenal support. And this is something I got to talk about a lot. As the seasons change, okay, if you're in summertime, you're getting lots of sunlight, you don't need this. But if it's wintertime, you want to do Dr. Joe's D, vitamin D, it's D3 with K2. K2 helps build bones. But the D3 helps the immune system. And then I'm also going to recommend a quarter teaspoon of nutritional yeast every day or more, but at least a quarter teaspoon. The beta-glucan in nutritional yeast helps stimulate the immune system. Hey, listen, got to go to break. If you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE. Same number you can call to make an appointment or go to my website, drjoe.com. Uh, if you call right now, 844-44-DR-JOE. We'll try to get you on the air. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And thanks for telling your friends. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. <coughs> Hey, don't sell yourself short. There we this go. Is... Hey. <laughs> Fix the hair again. Okay, so what we were talking about was um, arthritis causing white blood cell count to rise. And then is that a kind of catalyst okay, got to leukocytosis? Leukocytosis. Uh, could it be? Maybe. Absolutely. So anything that can cause the white blood cells to go up, uh, infection, and arthritis, or uh, you know, osteoarthritis can cause that, autoimmune diseases. So the answer is maybe. There's a lot of things that can cause the leukocytosis. So yeah, I'd certainly check it. And the nice part, of thing, nice part about this is too, with chiropractic care, it helps stimulate your immune system, which is pretty awesome. So hopefully that answered your question. I don't want to waste any <coughs> super greens here. What else you got? What do you have? What do you have? Dr. Ayers here. Thanks for your words and wisdom. Thank you, Dr. Ayer. It's always good to hear from you, my good friend. I hope all's well in your world. Hopefully you did well with the uh, tornadoes and floods and hurricanes and everything else. All right. And Nancy says, hi, Dr. Joe. Hi, Nancy. Why, I, why do I get bloated every time I eat? As soon as I eat, doesn't matter what it is. Any suggestions? Could be the stomach up against the diaphragm. This is really, really, really common. And I see this all day, every day, myself included. And I know... But when my stomach is up against a diaphragm, I feel bloated. I just feel fat. And another thing is that I find that I can't stop eating. I eat. I know I ate enough food. I ate enough nutrition. And I'm hungry all the time. And then we got to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm and chiropractically adjust the nerve supply in the upper back because that's the nerve supply to the stomach. So that's probably what's going on with you. And, of course, got to look at what you're eating. But I'm hoping that you're eating good. Eating well? Eating good. Feeling well. Eating good. well. Eating well. Well. Good is for is an adjective. Uh, well is how you feel, right? As well as good feeling, is, and good is how something can, or what something can be. Can be right. Okay, so hopefully you're eating the right food. You. Yes, and if you are, um, 
then it's probably a mechanical problem and just come see us. And if you're in Raleigh, North Carolina, go see Dr. Ayers. Because when I'm in Raleigh, I go see Dr. Ayers. Look at that, free plug. That's right, no charge for that one, Dr. Tom. <laughs> um, well, now that we're out of questions, something I wanted to ask everybody. Everybody. Not a question for Dr. Joe, but a question for all of you. What do you want to hear about? What shows would you like to hear about? We're going to run a poll next weekend on Facebook, and we should be running it through the week on Instagram. So please interact. Let us know uh, through the drop down list or through the poll what you'd like to hear about. Uh, but then as a whole, send us a comment now. You know, send us an email, a message on, on uh, the website, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. But let us know, what, what do you want to show about? We are here for you. Yeah, I was talking to one of my, uh, my syndicators who syndicates the show nationally. And there's a, a station down in Jacksonville, Florida that wants to build a whole station around topics like this. And they're asking me, who else do I know who does shows like this? I, I don't know anybody who does shows like this. And um, I said, he was asking if we could do a live show, you know, a, a daily show for them. And my syndicator said, you have over a thousand shows on your website. He said, we don't even have to do any new shows. We can just run the old ones for several years. But if you have a topic you want us to cover, please send it to us. And if we can, we will. I'm more than happy to cover topics for you, kind of why we take questions. But if there's a whole show you want us to do, uh, I'll try to do it for you if we can. So send us those in, that information. And once again, to make an appointment, I strongly advise you come see us because so many of you are suffering needlessly. You have neck pain and back pain and acid reflux. If you've ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. You need to come see us. In the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. In the Raleigh area, Dr. Tom Ayers. We'd love to see you and try to get you well and keep you well. And so it's a very simple process. Go to the website, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment right online. If you want to uh, call us, if you have questions, some people have questions about insurances, you can always call us, uh, 844-44-DR-JOE. We're more than happy to do what we can to help get you well and keep you well. Okay, are you a fan of juicing? I'm, I'm more of a fan of pureeing than juicing. Because when you juice, you take out the fiber and the nutrient, uh, you take out the fiber. So if you're gonna do that, I recommend you, uh, you just grind up the whole thing. Now, if you juice, make sure it's mostly vegetables with a little bit of fruit. Because otherwise it's too much of a high concentration of sugar. Dr. Joe's essential source, we take fruits and vegetables and we juice them for you. Take the water out at a very low temperature, and what's left is a powder. Then we add prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and a complete multivitamin. And then we add stevia to make it taste good. So this is what I, you see me drinking all the time. It's what I take every single day. I take a scoop of this and a scoop of super greens with chlorella, spirulina, wheatgrass, bodygrass, and alfalfa grass. Uh, that alkalize the system, gives you a ton of minerals. Uh, we have dults in here. We have iodine. Uh, dults is a great source of iodine. So I take a scoop of each every single day. The nitric oxide, amazing for circulation. This stuff just works great. Um, I'll take this quite often, actually every day. It's part of my regimen. And then adrenal support I take too. We have other supplements as well. I got the wellness booster. We're going to have a, do a whole show soon on wellness booster and getting the immune system working properly. I was a guest on my friend Belinda's show today. And we did a whole whole hour on nothing but getting the immune system ready for, for the season. And stuff. All the supplements on my website, drjoe.com, along with my books. Question? Garrett, you look you look anxious over there. Nothing? No questions. Good. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are uh, we're getting everything across to you. We got a lot of people watching. Oh, yeah? Good. We got lots of... We're screaming out. We got three cameras going on here. It's really kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Steve Winslow is in w Okay, here comes traffic. First traffic, then weather, then us again. And do me a favor, if, if follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, if you're on one, follow us on the other as well, uh, just in case something happens and one of our systems goes down. Or like with Instagram, I know we got to come out every hour and go back in again. So follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and send us your email address. Because many times Garrett will get crazy and run a sale on supplements or free shipping or something along those lines. And we send it out to our people on our newsletter, on our uh, uh, yes. email so address. So the newsletter goes out now on Mondays. Okay. We include in that one free recipe, one of our latest blog posts, and the most recent live show. It's all there? It's all there. And then occasionally you'll get something throughout the week, an additional email of whether or not we're running a special, we have a new product, right. a new feature on the website, So, or if we've added yeah. another source. Right. We do surveys sometimes. We want to get your opinion on things. So you guys are important. You drive the show. So uh, send us your email address. It's very helpful to us. And we'll never give it out, I promise. Don't worry Let's about that. Let's see if you can answer this in 
in, in two Go words. Go ahead. Real quick. Three, three words. Three words. Some of that rain possible. Dr. Joe, what's really the best way to Wednesday alkalize the body? Chance of a morning shower Wednesday, then becoming partly cloudy. Super green. <laughs> two, two words. Two words. Street at News 95.5 and AM 750. I was thinking on Whole Foods USB diet. Okay. Personal responsibility and independence are important to you. Start today with something completely in your control. Your health. Dr. Joe Esposito is on. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you spend a little time with us. Always a pleasure to spend time with you guys. We're talking today about hardening of the arteries. And it's a big issue because we see it so often on our patients. And patients come in and they say, well, Dr. Joe, I have hardening of the arteries. And I say, what caused it? And they say, I don't know. So that's what we're talking about today is oxidizing uh, polyunsaturated fats. Um, and that, that causes an inflammatory reaction. So the body kind of lays down cholesterol to stop that irritation. High acid diets can irritate the artery walls as well. Um, so you really got to work hard. Well, you don't have to work hard, really. You just have to understand what you're doing. And a lot of the health that we teach you from a nutrition standpoint is passive, not active. You have to not do something. You have to not add what I call the seven deadly sins to your diet. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, uh, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. I know you're saying, Dr. Joe, that's my whole diet. I know it's your whole diet. That's why you're sick. So when you start going to the other way, come to the, the, the light side, uh, you'll be amazed. And the minimum amount of nutrients you should take every single day is what? Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. They taste great. I mix them together with cold water, coconut milk, almond milk, shake it up and drink it. You want to get really nuts, throw some berries, some frozen berries in there, whip it up in a food processor or a blender, and you get really nuts and you get like blueberry ice cream. Uh, but I tell you what, most people, once they start taking it, give it a week or two to kick in and you're going to ask the question and everybody else asks, why didn't I do this sooner? And as chiropractors, we hear that all day, every day. Everybody thinks they're unique and original when they say that. Gee, Dr. Joe, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. My headaches are gone. My back pain is gone. My sciatic pain is gone. My numbness in my arm is gone. I don't know why you didn't do it sooner either. But don't be like those patients and regret that you suffered all that time needlessly. And the longer you wait, if bones are out of alignment, they rub up against each other and they can wear out. And if the discs wear out, we call that osteoarthritis. And osteoarthritis, as we said earlier, is a mechanical condition. So if it's a mechanical condition, you fix it mechanically, which is what? Going to the chiropractor, getting the bones put back in place. Let's take some more callers at 844-44-DR-JOE. Joey, how can we make your day better? I'm very happy you called. Doing great. Right. Okay, gastric bypass, right? Uh-huh. Right, understood. Sure. Uh huh. Sure. Right. Sure. Well. I understand. Well, right. I get it. Joey, Joey, I used to be fat. I totally get what you're going through, man. I hear you. I got stretch marks on my chest, the back of my legs. I totally get being overweight. And the gastric bypass, and I, I've known many people have it, and then you just eat, like my uh, one person I know, a relative of mine, she realized she could eat ice cream. So she couldn't eat a lot of meat and a lot of breads, but she could eat ice cream. Well, she lost the weight and gained the weight again. So the gastric bypass, again, treats the symptom, not the cause. So here's the thing. In our office, and, and we can do this for anybody anywhere around the country, we do a doctor-supervised weight loss program. And if you go to my website, drjoe.com, and just send us a message, or you can call the office, 844-44-DR-JOE, during business hours. And it's a 21-day program where we, we just kind of tighten up the screws a little bit for 21 days. We get you on a bunch of supplements. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. 
And so if we get this high, super high concentration of nutrients into your body, it kind of helps reset your brain. And as a former fat person, I totally get the brain out of control. And so we try to reset the brain. And then once we do that, it's a lot easier to continue on and make it more practical. Because if you're over 300 pounds, you can't imagine doing the things I'm talking about. But when we reset the brain, many times you say, okay, now I get what you're saying. So you can call the office, we get you on a 21 day protocol. And then after that, then we get you on a second protocol where we continue with the new, different supplements and get you on a good food. And there's plenty of food to eat. You just have to change what you're eating. And you can eat a lot of, of the food we're talking about and, and you'll help lose the weight. Now, some people do real well on a high protein diet. Some people do well on a high fat diet. I personally do well on a low fat diet. If I, I tried ketogenic and I gained weight, and I'm like, how can I be gaining weight? I don't do well on a high fat diet. I do well on a low fat diet. So we've got to find out what works best for you and we can do that. That's not a problem. But you're not alone, Joey. 65% of the world is right where you are. So we'd love to work with you. Thanks, man. Appreciate the call. And folks, if you do want to learn more about the Doctor Supervised Weight Loss Program, you can call the office 844-44-DR-JOE um, or go to the website, send us a question, and either Kayla or Tara will get back to you and they'll give you all the information on that. And it's great. I've, I've done it. And even though I don't need to lose weight, I do it because I just like to kind of jumpstart my body. And again, once you get into this lifestyle, I promise you, you're going to realize how easy this is. And you're going to say what everybody else says, why did I wait so long? Why didn't I do this sooner? And that's why chiropractic is so exciting to me because it gets to the cause of your problems and doesn't just treat the symptoms. And we work very closely with other doctors in the areas. Uh, we have medical doctors, um, uh, neurosurgeons, vascular surgeons, psychiatrists, dentists. And so we refer all the time to doctors and they refer back to us because we, we can't do everything. I don't do eye exams. I send you out to an ophthalmologist or optometrist to get an eye exam. Uh, we have women doctors, uh, gynecologists that we work with, and some people prefer to go with a female medical doctor. Some people want a male medical doctor. We have a list of everybody. We're more than happy to work with you. So if you want to become a patient, I think you should, go to the website, drjoe.com, or give us a call, 844 Joe. get it set up. Now, we're talking about hardening the arteries today and heart disease, and it's interesting because over the last two decades, a lot of developing countries um, are starting to get uh, diseases of excess. And that's what we have in this country. We have a lot of cancer and heart disease and high blood pressures and strokes. And a lot of those diseases are diseases of excess. What that means is we're get, we have the ability to eat a lot of bad food and processed foods. And monosodium glutamate, I'm going to try to cover that if I can. To, uh, I don't know if I have time. But monosodium glutamate and how the body has glutamate receptor sites. I guess I'm going to cover it anyway. And the glutamate receptor sites, when they fire off, can cause free radicals to occur. Free radicals can now attack and oxidize uh, low-density lipoproteins and cause them to burrow holes in the artery walls and lead to things like heart disease. So processed foods have a lot of uh, monosodium glutamate in it. And the reason is that monosodium glutamate stimulates a taste bud in your tongue called an umami taste bud. Now, if you've never heard that word, it's a relatively new word. When I went to school, Dr. Ayers went to school, we, uh, we learned about uh, salt, sweet, bitter, and uh, sour. And those were the taste buds, and that's pretty much it. And recently in Japan, they discovered a new taste bud called the umami taste bud. And that's the savory flavor. So if we put monosodium glutamate or glutamic acid in the food, it stimulates the umami taste buds, and it's a flavor enhancer. And so that's what's happening. It's enhancing the flavors. And people like the food more, and so you eat more. But that can cause free radical production in the body. And it's an excitotoxin to the brain. It can cause the brain to misfire or fire off more than it's supposed to. And as a chiropractor, we want to make sure the nervous system is working the best it possibly can. From a structural standpoint, we do adjustments. And then in our offices, from a chemical standpoint as well. Folks, if you have a question, one last segment of the show, 844-44-Dr. Joe. If you don't get on, send us a question through the website, drjoe.com. We'll try to answer them for you. To make an appointment, 84444 Dr. Joe uh, or drjoe.com in, in the Atlanta office, in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Hey, gotta go to a break. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back. Does this sound like you? Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches? Chances are you'd benefit from chiropractic care. Most people benefit from chiropractic care because chiropractic care tries to get to the cause of your problems and not just cover up the symptoms. If you're ready to get well, I want you to go to my website, drjoe.com or call 844-44-DR-JOE and make an appointment for you, your friends, and your family today.
We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Make an appointment today so we can help get you well and keep you well. Are you experiencing hot right. flashes? All right, what do you got? Got two questions for you. Go ahead. Over here from Twitch, uh, my nose is bleeding for 30 minutes today. Wow. What does this mean? Okay. What could be this a, mean? Well, it could be several things, actually, of course. Uh, ultimately, if, if it continues, we want to maybe do an MRI or a CAT scan and see what's going on in there. Um, but it could be a low flavonoids. Flavonoids are uh, found in plants, and what they do is they help uh, the blood vessels get, uh, get stronger. And so if you have a bad diet, if you have a high acid diet, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, the blood vessels can become weak, and so they're more susceptible to breaking. Um, if, it's, if you're uh, around uh, dry air, dry air can dry out the sinuses as well. Uh, you can take some olive oil or coconut oil, just rub it on the inside of your sinuses, and that can help that. Uh, if it persists, though, we might want to get that checked out. But super green is an essential source. We're a great source of flavonoids, which can help build up the blood vessels. So you might want to try that. If, again, if it becomes persistent, get that checked out, though. You don't want to let that go. I wonder what Tim Andrews would have chimed in on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a guest on a show, uh, Eric Von Hessler's show, uh, every week. And there's a fellow there named Tim Andrews, one of the guys he calls his doctrinaires. And Tim Andrews is, uh, and all of them are just amazing comedians. Eric was a stand-up comic at one time. Uh, Tim is funny as heck. Uh, we got English Nick, who comes in from another station, uh, 97 Wonder River, and he's great. And it's just just a gathering of amazing talent. I'm so honored to be in the room with these guys. But Tim does voices. He's, he, he does impersonations. And he does my voice. And he, they call him the anti-Dr. Joe. So I'll say, like, uh, we did one show. I was talking about drink more water, take Dr. Joe's adrenal support for energy. And then Tim, in my voice, says, and heroin. Make sure you do heroin. Make sure it's organic because you don't want the pesticides in there. And it's funny because Eric, the, the host, has to say anti-Dr. Joe. No, because people can't, he, apparently he can't tell the difference between hey and I. So he, but he's funny as heck. So anyway, I digress. A much more serious question. Yes. Okay. Uh, so Michelle said that her uncle has leukemia mm. and it was dormant. White blood cells, uh, slightly elevated, and now has night sweats. Uh -huh. What kind of supplements or what diet changes could be made? Well, again, I, I can't give you a, a treat, advice to treat the cancer, but what I would do if it were me, I would absolutely get on Super Greens and Essential Source. I would get some pH paper. Go to a drugstore and get it, and you pee on it. It's a little strip of paper. You pee on it, and there's a color chart that comes with it. Look at the color chart. You want to make sure his pH, his levels of acid, is between 6.5 and 7.0. Okay, I want to make sure we're not going on. 6.5 to 7.0. 7.0 being the best you can be a better than 6.5. If he's 6.5 or lower, he's very acidic. And that's cancer does cancer loves acid. So you might want to consider alkalizing his system and you do that by cutting out the acid foods, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Getting on super greens an essential source to help alkalize the system. Um, there's a lot of other things we can do as far as that this goes, but if we can just do that as step 1, that's what I would suggest. And then adrenal support because the adrenals help fight inflammation. They produce something called prostaglandins and will help bring down the inflammation. So you might want to consider that as well. Yeah, some some old doctor guy at one point said something about uh, cancer cannot survive or, or disease cannot survive in an alkaline body. Yes, and that's that's there's a lot of research in there that the more alkaline you are, the less likely to have a problem. So do his pH, and then you can find out there's no question. If it's 6.5 or lower, yeah, that's something you want to address. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? No questions. Again, guys, if there's anything you would like a show on, please let us know. Yes. We're not running out of material. Oh, by God any knows. Means. <laughs> we, we could do nothing but shows on ED and... Erectile dysfunction <laughs> and <laughs> ketogenic <laughs> diet. <laughs> and everyone would be happy. But if there's anything we haven't gone over or that we haven't gone over in enough detail, please right. let us know. And uh, yeah, Garrett walks in my office and he laughs because I've got stacks of research, just piles of paper everywhere. And those are our future shows. So if I stop today, if I stop researching today, we probably got another two, three years of shows ahead of us. So there's plenty of stuff out there, but maybe there's a special topic you'd like for me to cover. I'm more than happy to do that for you. Again, we want to be your doctors. We want to help you get well and stay well. And that's why we have the supplements because that's something you have control over. That's something that you can do every day, which I do suggest you do. Oh, here we go. Radio. That's why you listen to Dr. Joe Esposito on WSB. 
Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. We're talking today about hardening of the arteries, what causes it, and things that you can do to help uh, deal with it. And, and in many cases, according to Dr. McDougall, for example, talks about reversing heart disease. And I've seen it happen in my practice. And again, I'm not a cardiology researcher, but I've seen it happen when people start following our nutritional advice. We get the digestive system working. Uh, we get them on good, some good supplements. And we take another x-ray or follow-up report at their medical uh, doctors and, you know, six months, eight months later, and they say, oh my gosh, it's getting better. And I hear this all the time. The doctor says, well, what are you doing? And they'll say, well, we're going to see Dr. Joe and his team of doctors. And most doctors around the country know who we are. And they'll say, whatever he's doing, just keep doing it. And whatever Dr. Joe says, just keep doing it. Uh, we had one uh, patient a uh, while ago, and she was uh, uh, she had a, a, a autoimmune disease. And she sat down with her nutritionist at the hospital and started going on and on. You know, this is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. And, she's, and the nutritionist said to the patient, well, you seem to really know your stuff. She goes, well, I'm a patient of Dr. Joe's. And she closed her book. The patient said she closed the book, put, put it down on the desk and says, whatever he says, do it. This guy knows his stuff. So we want to get you well and keep you well. And that's why we have hundreds and hundreds of hours of podcasts on the website, video and audio. You can download them from SoundCloud, watch them on YouTube. They're all on the website, drjoe.com. We keep a blog going there. You can read the blog if you want. Uh, if you have questions, send them to us through the website. If you want to get the supplements, the books, uh, those are all on the website too, drjoe.com. But if you want to make an appointment, which is the best thing to do, you can do that as well at drjoe.com. Let's start, take some more callers at 844-44-DR-JOE. Chad, how can we make your day better? Oh, thank you. Oh, I hear psoriasis every day. Yeah, go on. Uh huh. Yep, really works. Yeah. Sure. Uh huh. Sure. You know I got advice. Come on, Chad. <laughs> I always have an opinion. Um, yes, uh, with psoriasis, skin diseases, I always think of the liver. And so whenever I see itchy skin, whenever I see breakout psoriasis, I always start to think, okay, is it a liver issue? And chances are it is. So that's why when you gave up the sugar, it worked so well. Because the sugar has to be processed in the liver, and the fructose has to be converted into glucose, and it produces uric acid and creates fatty liver, and a whole other show on sugar processing. But what happens is um, you got to get that liver cleaned up. So from an external standpoint, you can use uh, coconut oil, extra virgin organic coconut oil, and just rub it on the skin, and that might help from the outside in. But then we got to get it from the inside out. That's why the sugar worked once. So there are certain supplements that I've, I've seen work real well um, for liver issues. Milk thistle is one, for example, that works real well to help the liver break down issues. And I do this a lot with patients that are on medication because a medication can cause liver damage if they have a bad diet. And um, there's different types. There's a liquid form that we, we use a, com a company. It's not a Dr. Joe product. We use other companies as well. But if you call the office, ask for Kayla or Tara and ask them for the milk thistle, we can tell you how to get it there. And you want to make sure with any supplement, you want to make sure you're getting only the highest quality because you're wasting your money to buy a cheap supplement, just like you're wasting your money buying cheap almost anything in life. So, um, but what, go ahead. Uh, rather not, maybe off the air. Why don't you send it, send, send it here as a message on the, uh, on the website. If you ask specific brand names, we don't want to talk about them on, on, the, on the air. Um, but you can send it to me through the website. I'll answer that for you. Um, but let's try that. And I really want you to cut out all your processed foods, your fried foods, uh, your breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. Of course, those are sugars. Um, but anything that's going to cause liver damage. And fructose is a real big one. Because for... <laughs> So, um, yeah, well, well uh, go, get the baked potato and get out of there. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, when you start doing that, and then I'd also add Dr. Joe's enzyme support because enzymes are really, the liver produces enzymes. If we could take the stress off the liver by giving us some external source, the liver then has the ability to start to heal. So I would take the enzyme support and have something raw at every meal, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, and raw food is going to help the liver, uh, take the stress off the liver as well. So let's, let, all right, thanks so much. Appreciate the call. And uh, yeah, whenever I see skin issues, I always think liver. And most cases, we're right. And it's interesting. I was on WebMD the other day, and I was just reading, and they had a question about um, uh, uh, how do you know if your liver is not working right? And the first thing that came up, skin rashes and itches. And I went, there you go. Everybody's got the same idea. So that's good. 
Um, so folks, we're almost out of time here. We only have a few more minutes. Uh, do want to talk about the need for antioxidants because we are running out of time here. As we get older, we need more antioxidants. As we get older, we have to eat a better diet, not a worse diet. As we get older, our body needs more rest. As we get older, the body needs more chiropractic care because the body just doesn't function like it used to. And so if you want to fight the, the, the ravages of time, make sure the spine is lined up for all the joints. There's 206 bones in the body. Any one of them can come out of place. So we adjust feet and knees and hips and fingers and elbows and shoulders and skulls even all day, every day. So get the joints realigned. That's the simplest, easiest thing you can do and relatively inexpensive. And again, don't let an insurance company dictate your treatment. You're the, you're the patient. You should be able to decide what you need. So if you have issues or questions, you can always call the office and we can answer them for you when it comes to that. But we take Medicare. We take most health care insurances. I've never seen a car accident ever where the car was damaged and the occupants weren't. The sooner you get to see us, and it, we are in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, we have offices. The sooner you get to see us, the better. Now, if the accident was 50 years ago, it's better than waiting 50 years in one day. Or if the accident was yesterday, come see us today or tomorrow. Because we want to get you well and keep you well. And we put together a whole protocol for our patients, the nervous system, the digestive system, and your diet. Minimum amount of nutrients, say it with me, right? Super greens and essential source. I personally take adrenal support because I'm getting older. I want to make sure my adrenals are working. I take B-complex because as, a, as a, I eat a plant-based diet, I don't get a lot of B12 in my diet. So I take a Dr. Joe's B-complex as well. Uh, I take vitamin D. I take 5,000 international units a day. Again, I was a guest on a show earlier today and somebody called up and said, Dr. Joe, um, my, mine is uh, 42 uh, milligrams per, nan nanograms per milliliter. And I said, that's great. He says, yeah, I do what you tell me. I take the Dr. Joe's uh, uh, vitamin D. So if I was got to run, if you have a healthcare question, send it to us through the, through the website, drjoe.com. Make an appointment, drjoe.com. Um, uh, uh, we have a, a special going on today, Garrett. We do. We got a coupon code. Code for today's show is HEART. That's for free shipping on the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. And it's only good for the next few days, right? It's only good up until the next show. Okay, folks. And folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, website drjoe.com. Thanks so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. This is Dave Baker, the home fitness Oh, it is Dave Baker. Y'all at us. There we go. And folks, for all of you on social media, thank you so much for listening. And thanks so much uh, for telling your friends. Make sure you suggest us, share our posts with everyone so that they can like us and follow us. If you're on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, follow us on Facebook. Uh, send us your email address so we can send you out our newsletter. A lot of good information there. Many times we have specials and uh, supplement deals and coupons. We want to make sure you get the best quality services you can. And to make an appointment, I say it all the time, drjoe.com. Thanks for listening and tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.